This is a demonstration of the query snippet for ModX Revolution. And you can see that it's been installed by looking under your elements snippets. You see query, it's right there. It's just one snippet. And this is sort of a replacement for things like get resources, but it's more flexible because you can specify any collection to query. So not just the ModX site content, the mod resource object, any table that the ModX database handle has permissions to access, you can query. So let's uh, look what we have in our site. Not a whole lot, so in order to test this, I'm going to use uh, one of my ModX utilities called a fire hose, and it's in my uh, ModX utilities library here if you wanna grab that. But what that is gonna do is generate a bunch of sample pages for us. So if I do a PHP fire hose help, I get some options, and uh, I wanna create mod resource, which is uh, pages. Maybe not a thousand, but maybe a hundred will do us. So if I just do fire hose count equals a hundred, I should have a hundred pages now in the database. So let me refresh this and there they are. That's good for testing. So what's this look like? I'm on my home page. I'm going to call query. Um, often you can call this cached because things don't change that often, but for testing things out, I'll leave it uncached. I'll save it and then we'll view the page and it generates a, uh, kind of a crazy output here, but I wanted to demonstrate that uh, you can do a lot with this. And this is a, a PHP view, so it's doing some extra calculation, but that way you know it's working and you can see I have sort of a scaffolding window view of the table. And because this has a lot of content in it with a lot of stuff, um, it's not very convenient to view. So what do we do about that? Um, most often you're gonna wanna generate something like a list. So in query, uh, it's, Kind of a special interface in that any parameter applies directly to the table that you are querying so if i did something like template equals three that's telling uh, the sql query to look for any records where the template column has a value of three so in query anything that does not have an underscore is treated as a direct database filter which isn't what we want here we want some control parameters to control the formatting um, it does support formatting strings, which is my effort to get away from using too many chunks, but I've found that to be somewhat problematic, particularly when there are nested tags. So if you're having any trouble with that, I recommend just sticking to the old school chunks. It's not as sexy, but uh, it's less problematic. So I've created a chunk here to format our list items called page li. So our underscore TPL, don't forget the underscore, is page li. And then if I want to look at the options available to me, I'm going to look at the wiki page and you'll see that all these control arguments begin with an underscore and we want to set the TPL outer to something useful. And I think there's a decent example here. So I'm going to grab this for demonstration purposes, put that in like that. And maybe I want to limit, nope, underscore, limit the results to be 10 and save it. And we should get a, a simple list here, and we do. Now, the thing I want to point out is that query also supports pagination. However, in order for it to do that, you need to remember to include the placeholder for pagination links, either uh, in your output, um, your TPL outer, or you can put that somewhere in your page template, and this will set the placeholder remotely. But if you don't have that placeholder somewhere, the pagination links don't ever get drawn. So if I refresh that, we should see, oops, pagination links. There we go. So we have some basic formatting here. This doesn't have any styling whatsoever on it, but it's there and it is theoretically functional. But you'll notice that when I click through these, nothing happens because it needs to pass an offset. And unless the snippet is reacting to that offset variable, the page doesn't actually change. So that gets us to the next feature of query is it has input filters. So I can tell the snippet to listen for URL parameters. Uh, we want to set the offset. And you'll notice that if I hard code it to something like 20, say, and I refresh this, the results change. I get some different results there. But that's not very useful to hard code it. What we want to do is tell it to listen and I'm gonna use this special input filter that only query supports and a couple other snippets I've, I've placed it on, but it, it's specifically built for this. I'm gonna tell this parameter 
to the snippet to listen to the URL, and I'm going to tell it to listen to the URL variable offset. So it's getting the offset variable. So if I save it, and we go back to the regular version of this, you'll see that uh, I'm generating, um, the pagination library generates a link, and now the snippet is listening for that variable named offset. Okay, so that's kind of a cool feature. Um, here's another example of how to use that. Hopefully this will bring it home. One of the other things you can do here to help you out is debug your query. So I could just put in a parameter, say debug equals one. And then when I refresh this, I get debugging information about what this thing is doing. I get the raw query, anything's passed, uh, control par parameters, etc. However, if I'm going along pretty well and I only run into problems sometimes, maybe I don't want to have to edit the snippet all the time. Maybe I want to listen for a URL parameter. So I can listen for the URL parameter D and use the input filter get. And again, that's only something that I built for this particular snippet. So I can listen for this and it's not on by default, but I can go and D equals one and it will listen to that parameter. So that hopefully gets you a good idea of what you can do with this. Um, I'll show you one more example here where we uh, maybe query something other than just uh, modx pages. Probably most of what you're doing is querying modx pages, but why not do something else? So if you'll notice in the firehose example, we can create users and basically anything else that you want. So if I want to create users, uh, I want to just copy that example. Maybe I'll create a hundred users. Firehose, psh, we just filled up the database with a bunch of users. And uh, we can check that by going to manage users. We'll take a look at that and Holy smokes, we just blew away our database there with a bunch of stuff. So what does that look like? Well, I need to set a class name to tell query what we're querying. So by default, it's looking at the mod resource. But if we want to query users, we better tell it to look at the mod user class name, which corresponds to the mod X users table. And when you change the tables, all these filters might change as well. So I think we won't have a page title, but we would have a username. So I'm gonna change my page LI, and then let's refresh this. And what we got? Well, nothing there. So what am I doing wrong? Offset I better take off, and still nothing. Well, let's debug it. I'll put in my D equals one, since I still have that in my snippet call. Hmm, it's still uh, looking for mod resource. So what did I do wrong? So I can go ahead and take off the debug and there we have users. Now, of course, these are named the same because it was piped in from Firehose, but there they are. Um, if you wanted to do something a little bit more interesting here, we can filter directly on one of the column names. So I can do uh, username uh, starts with equals E, for example, and I refresh this. Oh, that's just my user, right? So let's see how that works. I have a colon, and that's really kind of weird as far as normal syntax is concerned, but it works for this. That's what it was built for. If I want to see everything that Firehose put in, Fire, which is most everything else, right? Okay, so that, hopefully that gives you an idea of what things you can do with this. You can build search forms and you can search random tables. So I built this to be an extremely flexible solution for a lot of different problems. I've used it on a lot of different places, um, a lot of different packages. It, it just saves me the trouble of having to write my own snippet um, over and over again to do basically the same thing. So hopefully that makes sense. Check out the documentation. I'm uploading and updating this um, frequently and uh, happy coding.